All right, guys, this is the brand new Scorp C by Feiyotech. It's their latest gimbal. That's the follow-up to the Scorp. This one is the more affordable version coming in at just $269. I will explain why this is a lot more cheaper than the original Scorp and what functionalities you do get with this. I wanna start off with unboxing this. You can see from the front of the box, this has a 2,500 milliamp hour battery, which gives you roughly around 10 to 13 hours of usage time, which is absolutely brilliant. And this is also complemented with a brand new Feiyotech Scorp app, which I will also showcase. Inside the box, you have yourself the quick start guide, just to quickly show you some key information from the user guide. I will cover the buttons and the operations, but just to give you an idea, this is a very important page. So if you guys would like to pause the video and take a look at this and more information, then please go ahead. So this is the Scorp C. It's pretty much exactly the same design as the Scorp. You get yourself the gimbal, you have a tripod, you have here two quick release plates that I will be attaching with my Sony A7C. Of course, this is the gimbal. I will take this out. And the great thing about this that you may have seen already on the Scorp website, this has its own tripod legs that are in the shape of a scorpion without having the need to use a separate tripod this can stand on its own and finally there's a box of accessories just here you have various different control cables you have the USB-C charging cable for the gimbal a couple of other things you have yourself the lens mount for those cameras that have large lenses and I will attach this to showcase that capability majority of the users will have a large lens then you have some screws as well to connect both of these release plates and an Allen key. So now that's everything in the box, let's go ahead and show you the design of the Scorp C and how to set it up by balancing my camera onto the gimbal. One of the key differences between this Scorp C and the previous Scorp model is that this doesn't have the LCD display. It has just simple plain buttons. Of course, when you have the digital display, you have more flexibility to dive into more detailed options and scenarios and different modes. You can even go into settings and look at the firmware versions. That's not possible to do with this one, but you can use the app to do almost exactly the same things, but you'll have to connect the app via Bluetooth to get all of that capability. So now let's dive in a little bit more about the buttons and the ports on this gimbal. So just from the front control panel, you'll see there's a joystick, the shutter button, the mode button here for tilt, roll and pan. You can also lock all of these to have locked mode. You have the auto rotation button, which you can then cycle left or right. The battery indicator there is on the top. And then this is the light indicator for your connection. Just on the left hand side of this, you have the rotation button for portrait mode. So if you double tap this, this can go from landscape to portrait. You have yourself the power button there on the right hand side. These AB buttons are to have automatic trajectory and I will showcase an example of this. And this was great for capturing time-lapse or panorama footage, or just any perfect B-roll footage from one start point to another. On the left-hand side, you have the first person view button. So all of the axes, the three axes will be unlocked and this will follow your movement of the gimbal. This button is to switch the mode for the magic wheel. So if you press this once, you'll hear a beep notification. When you turn this, this will allow the axis to be switched between either the tilt, roll or the pan. And I'll showcase that an example as well. You have various different screws to lock in the different axes and various different ways to position the gimbal. These are connection ports that you have just underneath the release plate, both at the front and the back. To connect my camera, I will be connecting via USB-C into this camera port here and set it up on my Sony a7C. Then you have three positions for these silver lock buttons. This will lock the axis in place, which is why you're seeing this in a folded design. To unlock them, you have this one here, one just under there, and then one at the back under here. So let me go ahead and unlock those three, like so. I can start moving that. This one, I can start moving this way. And then the final one, now I can start moving this pretty much in all directions. At this stage, I should be ready to now put on my camera and balance the gimbal. Before I do that, I want to make sure I have the release plates connected properly to my camera. 
Now I generally use a tripod which has its own release plate already on there. And technically, if you have a very small lens and you don't need to use the lens holder, then you can just use your own release plate, which I think is great, that attaches to this universal mount here. So this is adjustable. You can literally connect it into there and switch between your tripod and the gimbal very easily. But because of the size of my camera, I'm going to be using the larger release plate, which I would then connect the smaller release plate on top of it with the lens mount and then connect it to the gimbal. So let me do that now. Now that I've positioned this on top of my camera, this is where the Allen key comes into play because to get through the gap, you would need to use the Allen key to tighten the bottom screw to the camera. The final step, the lens mount. So you position that on top. You have one more screw that will go through the top here. There we go. And this will hold that in place. Now that I have everything connected here, it is only at this point I can now go ahead and try to balance on my gimbal. Before I do that, one other thing that I really like to mention, which I think is a great feature, is you have this red circle slider. Once you've positioned everything and you've got it balanced, you can move this over the plate that it's on and use that as a marker for the next time to have your gimbal in the exact correct position to get it balanced very quickly. And you have that in various different locations. So you've got it on multiple axes as well. So very easy to slide. So I will go ahead and this is the position. I will put it in. And in fact, I'll put on the tripod. All right, so the gimbal is now fully balanced. It's currently off. One thing I would recommend is watch the gimbal balancing tutorial by Fairtech. I'll have it linked down below. It's not as simple as just balancing the camera facing forward just like this and it's going to work. You need to balance it in three different positions separately for the pan, roll and tilt axis. So make sure that's done so you'll be able to use some of the other functionalities like the portrait mode and the auto rotation mode. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera on. I've got it connected with my USB-C cable and then I'm going to turn the gimbal on. There we go, it's now centered. You have the trigger button here, which you can double tap to recenter it. So if I use the joystick to move it left and right, double tap, it will center it. If I wanted to turn the camera around into selfie mode, then I can triple tap and it's very quick and easy to do that. There we go. Now, one of the key things that you know I really like about this is that this has an inbuilt you know, handle or versatile arm. In my previous Fairtech gimbal reviews, I have the AK2000S that has an attachable versatile arm that you screw into place, and here it is. Now this one, it can sometimes you know scratch the side of the gimbal, you can remove it, but this has been a massive help when trying to get the most stable footage for my videos. So for the Scorp C to have this inbuilt, I think that is a great step and all of my shooting goes a long way when I use the versatile arms. Now everything is ready for me to show you some sample footage taken with this gimbal. I've made sure to set the center of gravity red dots in the different various axes so that I can remember this position next time I wanted to place my camera back onto this gimbal. You can buy some accessories so you can get the follow focus kit that you can attach and use the magic wheel for that. You can also get a unipod, an additional tripod, a long one, and various other things that you can check out on the Fairtech website. Now, it's so quick and easy for me to just grip the handle from the back and from the bottom, and then start shooting left and right in pan mode. One thing I really like is if I wanted to use this for maybe my social media and I wanna shoot in portrait, it's quick and easy to do this. So all I have to do is double press the portrait button just on the left of the handle, and it very quickly does that. Before I showcase, let me just recenter this, double press the portrait button. You'll see that it automatically goes and does this. Bring it back, and then you have it. 
Now let me show you the portrait mode. When you do switch to portrait mode, it goes from just pan mode only to FPV mode. So I'm going to double press the portrait button. How quick and easy was that? And there you go, very stable portrait footage. And then I can just switch it back. Put it back into pan mode. And there you have it. Let's take a look at some examples of me showcasing normal footage taken with the gimbal in pan mode and also in portrait mode. The next standout feature I wanted to highlight is the auto rotation mode. So you see we have the A button just on the handle here, then you have left and right. Once you start pressing the A button for auto rotation, then you can press either left depending on how you want the spin of the gimbal to go, or you can have it go right. So let me show you an example of that now. I'll place it down, I'll press auto, and then I'll press left, and you'll see it starts spinning left, you'll create some really good footage. Press it again to stop. There you go. And if you want it to go right, press auto and then press the right button. And look how stable and steady that footage is with the rotations. So loads of different things that you can do with this. Press the rotation button again and it goes back to center. So that's another great thing and here's some examples using the auto rotation. With the magic wheel, by default, you can switch between pan, tilt and roll. So you can see how responsive and how smooth that is. If you press the switch button just next to the magic wheel, you'll hear a beep. And then now it goes onto the pan axis. Press again and it goes to the roll. So whatever you like to do, get the perfect type of footage however you want to tilt the camera you can do that with the magic wheel very well 
Now here's some example footage of me recording using the magic wheel with my shooting. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, this one doesn't have an LCD screen on the handle here, and there's limited functionality compared to the Scorp model that you can do directly from the gimbal itself. So I wanted to showcase the ability of using the Feo Tech Scorp app, which is very quick and easy to connect. So whilst the gimbal is on, this is automatically picked up the gimbal next to it. Click on that to connect, and you can see straight away how quickly it connected. Now I'm just gonna run through some of the features of the app as well to show you the capabilities and how you can also use the app to control various different things that you can't do using the Scorp C on its own. Just on the left-hand side here, you have Scenario. This is where you can also do the auto rotation. But one thing I really like about this is the time-lapse and panorama modes. You can also track video here as well and choose this to control the gimbal. You also have button settings, so you can adjust the trigger button or the AB trajectory button, which I will showcase a demo of, of doing various different things in various different modes. So you can have PTF, pan follow, first person view, flash follow, and locked mode. You can also adjust the knob settings. So like I just showed, you can use the button on the left-hand side of the gimbal to make the switch between roll, pan, and tilt. You can also do that using the app. Follow speed, you can adjust the speed of the actual gimbal itself for when it does follow. I've currently set it to slow because I think that just gives me the best footage and the most stable and smooth footage, but you can adjust that however you like. You can connect your camera if you have a compatible one directly to the app, and then you can also change the camera settings from here, but I haven't set that myself, so I won't go into that. You also have the motor power, which you can adjust the speeds for each of the different axes. You can do the horizontal calibration from here. You can go into more settings and then you can silent the boot up noises. You can disable selfie modes or you can do manual lock. But if you click on the Scorp app there at the top, this is where you can control the gimbal. So right there in the middle, you have the joystick. So you can see how quick and responsive that is and how quickly it adjusts. Then you can also switch between the different options here. So I've recentered it. This is now flash follow. You can also switch to portrait mode using this. You can go to selfie mode, go back to center. You can start recording and capturing your footage with the shutter button there between the pictures and videos. And then you also have the different pan, tilt and follow mode options. And then you can also have locked mode as well. So various different things you can do with the app itself. What I want to do is show you some examples of these scenarios, which I think will look great. So I'm gonna give you an example of a panorama that I've taken using the app, a time-lapse, and also I'm gonna showcase the AB trajectory, which tracks the video movement. So let me put the phone to the side. I'm gonna quickly show you here how to do this. So you have two buttons, A and B. You hold down each button for about five seconds, but you reposition the camera in between. So if my camera 
I want it to start in this position, I will hold down A and you'll hear a beep. There we go. Now I can reposition it. Let's say I'll go this way and I'll go up a little bit and point there. That I will set as the B position. There we go. Now I just need to click on either A and B to go back in those rotations. So if I press A once, you can see it's slowly reversing back to that starting point from A. This is perfect to get either B-roll footage, cinematic footage, time-lapse, anything like that. And I just think it's absolutely great to set that if you want to use that as a common way to showcase different subjects. If I press B, it will go back that same way in that very nice slow motion. Then you can also change the speed and adjustment of this using the app as well which I think, you know, the functionality of having this in a compact gimbal like this, in a very affordable gimbal, I think is brilliant. Now let's take a look at some examples of me just using the AB trajectory buttons to get these types of shots. Alright guys, hopefully you found that review useful and you like the look of the Scorp C. To come in at $269 compared to the Scorp, like I mentioned, you have to give up that functionality of the digital display on the handle itself to give you more of those options of how you can basically control and use some of the features of the gimbal. And this also doesn't come with a carry case, which the Scorp does. But personally for me, I think that's a great price for all of the features that you do get with this. And sometimes simplicity for me is better than complexity. But the Scorp is also a very great gimbal for those people that like to get the maximum advanced set of features and they do travel a lot with their gimbals. So having that carry case is a great option as well. But as always, if you guys have any questions about this gimbal, then make sure to drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm super happy. Battery life is great. I charge it with the USB port just underneath the magic wheel there. And I pretty much am going to use this for all of my shoots because it's so easy to hold the ergonomic grip, the features and all of that packed into just a simple and easy setup of a gimbal like this, which looks great by the way, is a big win for me. So hopefully you found that useful. Make sure to subscribe. I have new tech videos out every week with cool gadgets like this and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.